The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it is hump day in a rib. And that was an awful quiet intro. <laughs> yeah. Very, uh, very I'm cool. hoping I'm hoping our audience actually were able to hear it. Uh, otherwise uh -oh. they'll be sitting there going. Uh, we're I'm getting we're getting it. waves from the control room. I don't mm -hmm. know. We're good? Okay. Okay, good. Because I don't know how to sign. <laughs> uh, well, Pleasant Street again is a zoo, people, over by Primacare. They're having their COVID drive-through yes. testing. Um, today, the, the line goes from the Primacare lot all the way down to the Bay Coast Bank. And they have police officers directing traffic again. Well, you know, the panic, the, you know, one thing about, uh, one of the great things, uh, one of the bad things, it depends on your perspective, obviously, of, of living in a blue state is that you get to see, witness this hysteria, because apparently the lemmings in this state still haven't figured out the truth, uh, because they're doing everything they can to suppress the truth about the, the, about the, I actually saw one of the guys who developed the vaccine, his name was Malone, mm -hmm. a noted epidemiologist, he's been removed from all these platforms because he's actually talking about the actual data and the truth, so they removed him. So look at everybody. This this mass hysteria over these tests, which is ridiculous, because unless you're showing symptoms, why would you want to test yourself? As we said before, we got removed. So if they want to take it, go ahead. <laughs> YouTube, do what you got to do. People are, people are leaving anyway and going to other places like Rumble and <laughs> and other places because you're ridiculous. You won't you won't allow the truth. Uh, the reality is. The Omicron is a very, very mild. Uh, and and, and, that's, and even and mainstream media says the same thing. It's a mild form yeah. of the virus. Yeah. It's, but it's more contagious. Yeah. It transmits more easily. It transmits like a cold or a flu. Um, and unless you're unvaccinated and immunocompromised or elderly, um, you may not have any problems. You may not, although hospitalizations have gone up tremendously. I mean, I saw on the report this morning, I think there's 68 hospitalizations in ICUs in Rhode Island. Mm. Um, and they had a 17% increase in positive cases. Yeah. And you're going to see an increase in positive cases because more people are going out and getting tested. Sure. That and, just makes sense. And look, that's the irony of going out for a test. You go out for a test, you test negative, and then you, go, you stop somewhere to pick up uh, butter or, or, or something, and you get and you get you get it. It's highly contagious uh, for the most part. And actually, data-wise, they're talking about uh, they're talking about the. I saw something this morning, and of course, you know, you've got to check the data. But there are there's there's data continuously. They're actually saying that they're finding that people who are not vaccinated are contracting Omicron less than the vaccinated people. Uh, for some reason, that uh, Omicron is, is in fact, there are, a lot, there are a lot of breakthrough cases. There was a half a million, I believe, in, in, uh, in New York uh, that uh, people are fully vaccinated. So listen, uh, the reality is this isn't a vaccine. A vaccine stops things. If you, have, if you get a vaccine for smallpox, you don't get smallpox. This is a shot. And it does minimize the effect of of the disease if you get it. It's been proven to make it a little less like the flu shot. Flu shots do not make mean you you're not going to get the flu. It means you're going to get a lesser case of the flu. So nobody's nobody's saying don't get vaxxed because I am fully vaxxed actually. So mm -hmm. the reality is a choice I made. But let's let's not try to suppress data. Let's look at every piece. And one of the reasons they're suppressing all the information they have for 75 years is they don't want you to really know. This is a lot about money and a lot about control. 
And it's a, it's a shame to see all these lines and these people sitting in lines. I was walking a dog up here at Bristol Community College yesterday and somebody stopped and asked me uh, where the COVID testing was and apparently she came into the wrong, she wasn't familiar with the area. So just go back to Ellsbury Street, go to the end, you'll see the thousand cars in line. You, won't, you can't miss it. So, but if you want to get tested, fine. Just like if you want to get a shot. But uh, the reality is that Omicron is not anywhere near a deadly, uh, it's not as, as bad as the original. And uh, there are a lot of medical professionals who are saying that actually Omicron is a good thing because you now beget, you're gonna get natural immunities and this is the endemic stage. This is a good thing. And uh, oh, you, just got, you just got a text in with a picture. So, hey, that's enough about vaccines. We've said enough to be taken off YouTube tonight. <laughs> so, don't, so just, you know, yeah, trust, trust yourself. Do your own research, as we say on this show all the time. And, and don't believe us, but don't also believe Fauci, because he's, he's changed so often that uh, nobody knows what he's talking about right. at the time, especially him. And remember, do what you feel comfortable with, but we're not, but we are in no way saying don't take the vaccine or take the vaccine. We are saying you've got to do what you feel comfortable with and you have to accept the outcome and the repercussions for your decision. Because yeah. if you don't take a vaccine, you probably can be terminated or uh, reprimanded in your employment. So remember, you've got to do what's best for you, but also think about other people. Yeah, just uh, as wrapping it up, I will remind everybody that both both CJ and I are fully vaccinated. Yes. So we are fully vaccinated. It was our choice. But I saw a court just upheld the Navy SEALs being terminated because they won't be vaccinated. Right. So that was a that's a good thing. And and look, the reality is, as I said, you've got to do what you're comfortable with. Due to research, we realize the population that is the highest risk. This is a fairly targeted disease. It kills people with comorbidities at 80. I think I believe the last stat I heard was 88 percent of the people or 81 percent of the people who have died uh, from this are over 65. Right. So we know that if you're elderly and if especially if you have comorbidities and even the children, children is 0.00 to 0.02 and those children unfortunately all have comorbidities they right. have cancer or something like that so but you've got to do what's comfortable and do your own research do not trust because every time you turn on a tv you'll be you'll be psychotic yeah. after watching television exactly. for a month or so exactly. about this stuff because every time you turn on a tv the goal pulls to be and moved around right right so well the horseshoe boy <laughs> the horseshoe boy. The boy with the golden horseshoe up his backside. Uh-huh. Got lucky again. Oh, don't, please. His don't. day to report to prison has been pushed back to the 28th, is it? He had requested he had requested that it be moved 30 days to January 10th, uh, January 3rd, which it was. And now it's been moved to January 28th. According to Judge Woodlock, the reason he cited, that he cited for this uh, pushback is the current COVID surge and Correa's pending appeal as the reasons for this extension. So once again, the golden boy gets to walk. The now, golden horseshoe. Yep. Now here, here's an interesting thing, which I think people should understand. During this period of time, because in the court order, it says that he must pay back his investors and he must pay the fines and he must pay the interest to the IRS and the taxes. And to date, he's paid nothing. He has paid absolutely nothing to anyone. And one of the interesting things is, as reported, and this is, this is being reported by Channel 12 um, and Fall River Reporter. Um, he said that he needed to do this, get this pushback for the holidays uh, to January 3rd so that he could uh, turn around and help his family with their business. Uh, and he got it extended to January 10th. He's got two more weeks now. And according to Channel 12 and the Fuller Reporter, he's not paying anybody but himself. You're right. 
I, I'm reading I'm reading the text right now because I got the same thing in, in the government's objection back in November they stated that quote to date Correa has not paid it, uh, back any of his defrauded investors and friends to date has not paid back any of the taxes he still owes and to date Correa has not paid back any of the hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash bribes that he grabbed from marijuana businesses all those years instead of repaying his debts Correa has asked to remain at liberty to provide what he calls, quote, critical assistance to his family small business uh, uh, during the busy holiday season. But what the former press has more accurately described is, quote, very likely the most expensive restaurant in Fall River, unquote, which it probably is. Unsurprisingly, the only person Carrera is prepared to pay is himself, unquote. So uh, I'm, I'm very disappointed in Woodlock. Yeah. I mean, this is just, look, he had his trial. He was convicted. I mean, what is this guy going to do? He's going to come up with an excuse for everything and to stay out of jail forever, I guess? I guess so. Seems to be that way. And I'll tell you, I, I am extremely disappointed in the entire system. Yeah. Because if the entire system can let somebody out and stay up, if it was you or I, we would be in jail right now. We wouldn't even have gotten out of the courthouse. They would have escorted us out and took us to jail. Yeah. Um, but again, politicians, yeah, they, they, they get we, treated differently. You're right. We have a double standard here. We have a standard for poor people. We have a standard for politicians. They get, they get preferential treatment. They get continuances. They get this. They get that. I mean, listen, he had his day in court. He had due process. Without a doubt, he had due process. Now this is getting this is beyond this is beyond ridiculous right. now. I mean this is just this is just inexcusable. As you said, some kid without any resources gets busted for something. He gets a he gets a public defender. He doesn't get a uh, a a high high powered uh, defense attorney that then he blames for doing a lousy job. Right. Uh, but they get they get crap for representation. They get railroaded through the system, and they're going to be incarcerated so quickly that their head's going to spin. So I find it hard. I, I, find th I find this a little bit disturbing because, again, this is another reflection of the double standard. You know, the rich, the rich and the nauseous and the thing, just as they do in government and in, in the city of Fall River when the rich people and the developers are going to save Fall River, but they never do. Right. Uh, this is this is again. This, he just keeps getting extension after extension after extension, and uh, I'm very disappointed in Woodlock. And when I talked to my friend, the lawyer, who said he was a tough guy, a obviously tough sentence, he's not uh, that tough right a now. A part, uh, you know, I don't know whether he's maybe got a little bit of a the sample of some of the marijuana stores and he's <laughs> mellowed out. But the reality is this guy doesn't seem very tough. Uh, you know, to me, I, I think the government was pretty accurate in their yep. assessment in November. Right. He's not paying anybody back. He's not doing anything except staying out of jail. Right. And you allow him to continue. Let him go start doing his time. He had his, he had his due process. I'm not saying throw him in a slammer before trial, convict him. He was duly tried and convicted. By a jury of his peers. By a jury of, well, almost as peers. Almost as peers. <laughs> but, uh, but, I mean, this is just getting nuts. I mean, he may never go to jail. <laughs> I, I think that's what he's striving for. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, you know, the flip side of this coin is that every time he files for an extension, doesn't mean the sentence gets any smaller. Yeah. It's just an extension, which means the time doesn't start yeah. until he actually reports to the prison. So... You know, he may be 31 before he goes to prison, or 32, but he's going to go. Yeah. And the only thing with that is, as you said, if he doesn't get off, which is always a possibility for politicians, mm -hmm. but, you know, they got Buddy Cianci, who was a hell of a lot slicker than, than Jaisal, uh, they finally got him in a can. But the, the reality is that all he's doing is delaying if he gets, if he gets the time, right. which I think he, sh he will. Um, that'll only mean he's going to get out older mm -hmm. <laughs> because he's starting later. Yep. Because his time is still going to be there at the end of this dance. Well, and the other thing that we got to look at is the fact that while he's out, he still has the potential to procreate. 
Okay. Well, if there's another excuse to stay. And, and that's exactly what I was going to say. If if his wife gets pregnant, all of a sudden I can't go in because I got to take care of my family. Not that that's going to stop a judge from putting him in, but the way Woodlock's been going, he may turn around and say, "Okay, you're going to serve six years on home confinement." Well, he can't provide for his family on home, home confinement because he can't work. I'll tell you, I, I don't. I, it just this is mind-boggling because you're going to tell me that nobody that's ever been involved in a small business went to jail. That's ridiculous. Right. Of course, there are people who have small businesses, big businesses, every kind of business, no business, criminal businesses. They get convicted. You know, there used to be an old saying, you do the crime, you have to do, do the, the time. time. But it looks like, uh, well, I guess they're going to, he might ultimately go to jail, but he'll come out a rich man because they're going to have to make a movie out of this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, he'll, he'll sell the movie rights to his story. Yeah, exactly. How I, how I got convicted and stayed out of jail for 20 years. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, Monday we had the Organization of Government otherwise known as the inauguration. <laughs> yes. And as we've reported on this show before, the mayor did cancel the inaugural dinner afterwards, which was uh, set up for select individuals to attend, uh, but they did still have the public uh, in inauguration. I had a problem with a couple of things. Number one, the vote on the city council president and vice president. Okay, mm -hmm. Linda made it clear that she didn't want either person for those positions. She was sending a message. When it came to president, she voted for Joe Camara, which a lot of people will do. But Joe Camara already knew he wasn't going to get the vote, so he voted for Pam. Mm -hmm. So why would you put him up if he didn't you put himself well excuse me let me change that he put himself up leo and linda voted for him but then it became uh unanimous for everyone else but that's a message that was being sent by linda it was definitely a message being sent by linda when it came eight to one linda voting against instead she nominated trot lee who said outright that he didn't want it so she made a definite statement to michelle dion i don't want you and that speaks volumes. Well, look, what she sent the message was she was being, uh, she was best just being obstinate because she didn't get her way. I think Linda had delusions uh, that she was going to take over now that her mayor, that her chosen candidate got reelected, and she's been, she's been a constant, you know, constantly reminding everybody that I called the mayor. I was in the mayor's office. I did this. Well, there's supposed to be a separation of That's those right. two. That's right. And you're not supposed to be, as I said, you can agree with the mayor. Nobody said you don't, you don't, you have to disagree all the time. But you were elected to be a separate part of the government. You are a check and balance. You are not the mayor's confidant and associate. You are the legislative branch. You're supposed to represent the people. You're supposed to look over the expenditures. And you haven't, frankly. No. But again, this is the problem that you have with these elections. We have low voter turnout. We have people who get elected because they put a street light in. And now I got my tax bill. My tax bill went up. Uh, the, 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 and I know yours did. Yep. And, you know, the assessment on my house went up. And here I am living in, in a city that's crime ridden, crime infested. And I got, I got uh, the, the mayor talking, to, you know, again, selling that same old bill of goods that the developers, Fall River is wonderful. All the developers want to come here. Of course they do. These are the places they make money. These are the places they stick the wind farms. They don't stick the wind farms in the rich communities. Nobody wants the wind farms near That's them. Right. And we can prove that. Kennedy, Teddy Kennedy, was one of the biggest advocates for wind power in the world. 
But when they tried to put him near his area of the Cape, he pulled every political string in the world. There's no damn wind farms down there. There's documentary. We said, you know, I gave you the name of it. it it's, it's on uh, about wind power. It, it's not the panacea. It's anything but the panacea. And they normally go to poor, poor desperate communities. And that's basically the def definition of Fall River. You, so, again, we got a man, he's on the radio now constantly saying, oh, everybody wants to come, all these developers want to come to Fall River. Of course they don't. They're going to make money, and then they're going to bail, like the carpetbaggers that they are. We've had developers come to Fall River for the last 40 years. How many developers have developed in Fall River? We've got market route rate housing all over the place. They were, they were created by developers. Has Fall River gotten any better? Has the drugs, has the crime, has the education level, has the job qualifications of, of, the, of the residents of Fall River improved? Absolutely not. All that, the, all that has happened is the rich got richer and the poor got poorer. Just like in San Francisco, where Nancy's eating her $15 a pint ice cream, having her $30,000 a plate dinners in Napa, and people are, are crapping and urinating all over the streets of San Francisco, which was one of the United States' most beautiful cities. They've turned that into a hellhole. So this is what happens. They con you again. Don't, as I said, we have to organize people. People have to get to the polls. De Blasio got a second term, as I said on a previous show. How could the worst mayor in the history of the planet get a second term? Tell you why. The turnout in that election in New York City was 8.5%. When 8.5% control the destiny of a city, you get the government you deserve. And as Teddy Roosevelt said, go look at it, Google some of his speeches, when he talked about how the Roman Empire collapsed, he said the Roman Empire began to collapse when the Roman people stopped voting. They were too busy going to the circus to watch lions eat people and, and having orgies, and they stopped voting and participating in their government, and they allowed government to become too big and too powerful. And remember what Jefferson said. I'll close this little rant with Jefferson. When a government is big enough to give you everything you want, it is big enough to take everything you have. And that's what they're doing. Hey, you, you couldn't end that better myself. Um, Linda has been, and so has uh, Paul, been on the radio the past couple of days, alluding to the, t the city administrator alluding to, to that he has a candidate. Uh, Linda has said that he knows that there's a candidate. She says there's no there's a candidate, 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 candidate. Nobody wants to say the name. We know it. We know it, and I'm going to say it. Oh, no, you're not. Yes, Come I on. am. Oh, I don't want to hear it. Oh. <laughs> I am going to say it. Uh, according to our sources, uh, Seth Atkins, Aikens, however he says it, uh, who is uh, currently the assistant corporate counsel, is in the running for the position of city administrator. Uh, he is currently meeting with city councilors to find out himself what they're looking for, what he needs, what, he's, what he has to ex expect. Now, here's the interesting thing. This is the first time I think any city administrator has ever met with the city council independently to find out what they think about him and if he's qualified. Now, initially, from what my sources are telling me, and Paul had said this himself before Mr. Atkins was considered, um, Paul wanted to combine the position of chief financial officer and city administrator, if you remember that. Correct. Now, Mr. Atkins has said, I have no background, no qualifications in finances. Numbers are not my thing. He's good at law. That's his thing. He's a lawyer. Well, he knows what's going on. He may be good at labor contracts. I hope he is to, find, to finally put in the contracts provisions to terminate people. I'd like to see that. So would I. Um, and obviously, he's going to know exactly what the city's looking for when it comes down to things that are sent before the city council. 
So with that being said, I think that he's going to be a straight shooter like he's been uh, with the corporate counsel. I think that he's not going to violate uh, 30A. I think that he's going to make sure the city council doesn't violate 30A. And I'm going to be sure that he's going to make sure that the mayor doesn't violate 30A. So it's going to be interesting to see if this is, a, if this is the selection of the mayor and if Mr. Aikens accepts the position. Well, That's the key. He's got to accept the position. Well, as gonna, far as I'm I know, gonna, he still hasn't accepted it. I'm going to tell you, if he behaves the way you say he's going to behave and does the right thing, he's not going to last very long. Right. Okay, that's number one. Number two, as far as the CFO is concerned, he's not a numbers guy. City administrator is not supposed to be the numbers guy, although it's nice if he is a numbers guy like Alan Silver was. But the reality is that you have an auditor and a treasurer. Right. I remember working with Mr. With, with Mr. Gupta, um, and he was very, very good with numbers. I dealt with him. Uh, he was uh, the representative to the retirement board at the time, and we had long discussions about finances and stuff. We don't need a CFO. We never did. Everybody forgets that that position was created for Mary Sahadi to be an assistant That's right. to Kathy Ann Viveris. We already have people in the city that are supposed to know numbers. We don't need to hire another one, but that's what government does best. As far as collective bargaining, I'm going to go on record right now. There's no lawyer in the world that should be sitting on a table. The only person that I ever sat at a table with that knew his derriere from a post hole in negotiations was Bob Connors. Mm -hmm. And Bob Connors was not a lawyer. The reason Bob Connors was a good negotiator was not because he's a lawyer. Lawyers can read language, but they don't know the ramifications and, you know, and how it affects other sections of the contract. They just read. Yeah, that's what it says. They don't understand unless they're really, really astute. They're not professionals at, at, uh, at 150E, the collective bargain. They don't know the, the, the nuances of that particular law and, and, and how labor law is completely different because intent has a lot to do with it and the way things are written. But I'll tell you, Bob Connors was effective because he was part of labor. He was with the police union in New York, yeah, New York. and he negotiated from the labor side, then he negotiated from the management side. When I sat at the table with Bob Connors, we may have disagreed, but we both understood, you know, and he understood what our proposals were and what the ramifications were. I have never seen anybody since then that has negotiated for this city, and most of them have been lawyers who know anything about collective bargaining, the impact of the contract states. And all you got to do is look at what we got. We got a guy out on two years now. Yeah. He's got so much, so much comp time that he's not, he's no longer on a job. He's retired, but he's still on a payroll for two years. So, who negotiated that? So it's a, it, it, you know, this whole thing is a big dance. He's going to pick who he wants to pick. And this is government again. We're, we're getting just like the feds. We're going to go meet with the city council and make sure. Paul, you know why Paul's sick and tired of people not getting through the process? Yeah. He wants to make sure that this guy will get approval. Mm -hmm. So he's having to meet with the council. So, hey, let's see what happens. But I'm going to tell you something. If he does the job and makes them obey the law, they'll get rid of him. Right. Because j they, there's just no incentive for doing it the right way. And that's the problem. You, we need a city administrator like we had. And Jim Smith wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. But we had Connors, Smith, and after that, the city administrator's job's gone to incompetence. Mm -hmm. You know, mall managers <laughs> and, and people like that who are not, who totally are unqualified to be, to be a city administrator. I agree. I agree. Um, one other thing I want to dis dis disprove before it gets on. During the inauguration, Paul turned around and said that he was honest, transparent, <laughs> and he wanted to keep his administration that way. Lie, lie, lie. As a matter of fact, Paul didn't even uh, apply the law appropriately and follow it when he terminated people from the park board because it needs a two-thirds vote of the council. But he always says, we got to follow the law, we got to follow the charter, only when it's uh, uh, to his benefit. Well, I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, depending on the weather on Friday, we may not be here, but please remember, stay safe, stay angry, and hold your politicians accountable. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Stay off I-95 in Virginia. <laughs>